Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be the advantages of dating multiple women. Well, I've got an email here from a viewer, and he shares some of his perspective on how he has completely changed his approach to his dating life. He obviously is dating multiple women. He shares some of his experiences and how having several women in his life as he's learning the things that I teach is helping him grow his self-confidence and also keep him in an abundance mentality instead of a scarcity mentality. Because you think about it, if, you're, if you have a business or maybe you work for a business or you work for a company and they have one or two customers, most companies aren't going to survive on one or two customers. And so if you only got one or two customers, you're going to be in a scarcity mindset. You're going to probably contact the customer too much, do too much, and you're going to creep them out, and they're not going to want to do business with you. But if you have lots of customers because you have a really kick-ass product or service, well, then you're in the situation kind of like I'm in with my business where you get to pick and choose the clients that you actually want to work with and do business with. You get somebody that's being an asshole, you say, you know what? You're fired as a client. I'm not going to work with you. That's a nice feeling to be able to do. It's the same thing with friends. If you have lots of friends and you have lots of choices for friends and having friendships, if you got somebody who's just an asshole, who doesn't show up on time, who blows you off, doesn't show up at all, who's rude, who's disrespectful, you just stop hanging out with them and spend your time meeting somebody new. And the same thing comes whether you're a man or a woman. If you have lots of options, that's why most women have lots of guys in their lives. They have lots of guys that they can date and go out with until they find one they really want to be with. Because when you're really emotionally invested in somebody and you have nothing else going on in your personal life, it's really hard to do the right thing and maintain some emotional self-control, especially if you're dating somebody that you kind of think is really a little bit out of your league at this particular moment in time. It's not until you're with them for a long period of time and you know how to show up and you you know how to treat them, provided obviously they're a healthy person, they're a good communicator, and they're not a total fucking fruit loop or a screwball, you'll be able to have a good, healthy, high quality relationship with them. But it's really all about working on yourself, becoming the best version of yourself that you can be. And by having lots of choices and lots of options, it makes it easy to learn Plus, the more people you interact with, whether it's business or personal, you're going to learn a lot quicker. You're going to be able to move your life or your business or your personal life forward a lot quicker because repetition is the mother of skill. It's trial and error. As you look at any sports franchise, it looks like it's take the NFL, National Football League. Every year at training camp, they have 90-something people in training camp. And then when cut down comes, they got 53, I think it's 53 men on the roster. So there's literally 40, 40, 40 plus people who are going to basically be out of a job once the preseason is over because they have like two or three days after the fourth preseason game to cut their rosters down to the 53-man roster. And it's because they have lots of choices. Lots of people want to play in the NFL and the ones that make all the money, yeah, they've got talent but also the way they approach the game their belief system, how they show up. They work a lot harder than people that are – because there's a lot of people in the – I mean in the NFL, everybody's got talent. And there's a lot of guys that have a lot of talent but they don't have their mind right. They don't have their belief system in order. And so they don't do the little things that are necessary in order for them to become successful and get a big contract later on down the road. There's plenty of – you know, every year there's somebody – that at one point, a year or two or three before, was a high draft pick. Maybe they were taken in the first round, they get a big contract, and then they even make the roster. Or they're on a, on a roster for one or two years and they get cut and nobody else even picks them up, and they end up going and doing something else. It's just because their heart is not there. Their heart's not into it, and they don't have a belief system that would help them be successful in the long run to get what it is that they really want. And so it's like a lot of what I teach in my book. It gives you a mindset. It gives you a perspective. It gives you a belief system and a general understanding of masculine and feminine energy and what men and women respond to, what creates attraction and what turns the other person off. And so you can show up and put your best foot forward 
and accentuate your really good quality so you can create attraction and maintain that over time because most people just don't understand it. That's, you know, I was talking to a, a woman earlier today when I was doing a phone session with her and she was telling me a story about how when she met her boyfriend, how they met and went out and had a first date and then they didn't talk for a few years later and then she's going through the process of telling me how she got back in touch with them and she's telling me basically – she gets done telling me how she wanted to settle down. She wanted to find the right guy for her. She had been dating for several years and she was really kind of over it and she wanted to meet somebody and then, oh, I got – went and I called this guy that I happened to date a few years before that because I wanted some advice about – something and i was like come on i mean seriously it's like you just shared all of these things she says no but i wasn't my intention to i was really calling him because i wanted his advice on this and i was like yeah it's like and you know i was pointing it out to her i was like i hear what you're saying but look at what your actions show that's why it's so important because you know especially like when it comes to women they have their idea of what they think it is that they want it's just like women that say, oh, I want everything to be 50-50. Okay, well, tell me about the guys that you actually date and have a relationship with. Tell me about the most passionate relationship you ever had. And every single fucking time, hands down, the guy never did all the things that she thought she, or that she claimed to be that she wanted. And the guys that actually did the things that she said she wanted, she friend-zoned them. Or they, they became a really great friend. Well, I just didn't feel anything for them. And it's like they don't make the connection on the behavior and why certain guys are attracted to and other guys they're not. It's one of the things I love about it. It's so fascinating this. And this is why it's so hard for the average guy to figure women out and have a good relationship and give a woman what she wants because 99% of the time what they think they want and what they actually emotionally respond to are completely the opposite. That's why I, I, in my book I tell guys it's like – Unless a woman's a good communicator and she's got a good relationship and she understands herself, really gets what creates attraction and what turns turns her off, you don't want to ask a woman for advice because most of the time you're going to give get advice that, that's not very helpful. It's going to be more emotionally focused and more focused on protecting your feelings. So I've got a quote that I wrote in this topic. I didn't want to go through this guy's email. and You'll see the benefit. I talk about this a lot. And a lot of guys have never had a lot of choice. They kind of feel guilty about it. Well, I feel kind of guilty about going out with three or four different women. It's like just because you go out on one date doesn't mean you're in a relationship. I mean that's how women look at it. They're keeping their options open. They want to get the best that they can get. And what happens is when they really start liking a guy, the other guys that they were dating, they start all of a sudden becoming busy or they take a little bit longer to return the phone calls and they start gravitating more towards a guy who really pushes their buttons emotionally and causes them to feel something. So the quote says, in business, in life, and in love, you will always be in a superior position if you have an abundance of choices. When you have lots of choices and lots of options, you can be very selective with the kind of people you work with or for, the kind of lovers you date, and the kind of lifestyle you want to live. When you don't have many choices, this will put you into a scarcity mindset. When you're in a scarcity mindset, your tendencies will be to settle for careers, jobs, businesses, life circumstances, lovers, friends, customers, clients, etc. that are less than what you deserve. As the old saying goes, one is no choice, two is a dilemma, and three is a choice. If you truly want the best for yourself, then you will always set yourself up in every area of your life to have an abundance of high quality choices. The quality of your life is in direct proportion to the amount of high quality choices that you design, build, and attract into your life and lifestyle. So let's go through his email. He says, hey coach, my life has kept changing and improving little by little. Notice one thing, it's like just like talk talk about all the time when I work with professional athletes, I mean even the best, best athletes doesn't matter what sport they're playing in. You watch them in the interviews, you'll hear this over and over and over and over. And they say it pretty much just about in every interview. I'm just trying to get a little better each day. I'm just trying to be a little bit of a better teammate each day. I'm trying to improve my game a little bit each day. It's incremental 
progress is the key to success in any endeavor. Most people, we live in a society that's like, give me the fucking pill, give me the magic pickup line, give me the little trick, the gimmick that I got to do to make the girl fall in love with me or to make the employer give me the job or make that client want to give me the million dollar deal or whatever it happens to be. Most people don't understand that success is a slow, methodical process. It's about committing to a process, not about achieving a goal. It's good to know the goal because obviously you know what your outcome is. You know what you're striving for. But day in and day out, it's going to take time to reach that goal. And so you have to focus on the process of what you must work on right now in this present moment to get to where you want to be. That's that's why I love watching Bill Belichick who is the coach of the New England Patriots, who just won another fucking Super Bowl, four Super Bowls in the last, what is it, 12, 14 years? And they've been to six Super Bowls since the early 2000s, something that I don't think any other team has done. No other team has been to that many Super Bowls. And one of the things that Coach Belichick, and he gets all of his players to do it as well, is they lose a game, they win a game, and the media is always they're looking for an angle to create some tension, to have some good versus bad, some good versus evil kind of shit going on in their stories because it creates polarity. And polarity sells newspapers and causes people to click on things. And he and his players are focused on one thing. We're on to next week. We're on to who we're playing next week. I don't care about what we just did an hour ago. We're on to next week. That's what we're focused on. He's completely determined to stay in the present moment on what he needs to do right now and he's not going to let these weak fucking people in the media get him off track because they're not going to help him they're not writing his paycheck he loves what he does that's why I, I, he's he, bill, bill belichick really inspires me i'd love to to meet him someday and sit down and, and interview him because he's just he's fucking genius and he's doing uh, you know when you look at nfl coaches i don't think there's been a coach that's that good since the great Vince Lombardi that I, anybody that I can think of that is just consistently awesome and excellent year in and year out every year his fucking teams are competitive even when his his Super Bowl winning quarterback went down he brought a guy in who was the backup and they still had a really good season and then that quarterback went on to another team and never achieved even close to the level of success that he had with the Patriots that's the difference when you focus on the little things that are important and you cut all that other bullshit out that's always around us. He says, I can feel the improvement since your first response. And I, I did a, a previous email of his. Actually, one, two, three different emails I've answered for him previously. One of them, I guess the last, or my first response was dating. Less is more. And then going through the painful she stood me up was another email that I answered for him in a video newsletter, which he was bummed about. And then the resilient, the ultimate first date, which I think was a, I did a, I don't know, a few weeks ago, a month or so ago where he got, got laid on the first date and just followed everything textbook. I give you a good plan to follow and the, the plan that I give, will, that I teach will give you the best possible chance for success. That's why I say read the book 10 to 15 times. Get to know it backwards and forwards because it gives you pretty much every kind – once you understand the principles and the, what I'm talking about in these videos is I'm assuming you already know the principles in the book. That's a given. You have to learn the principles. So if you haven't read the book, you need to read it. Every time I talk to somebody in a phone session, they're struggling. I'm like, how many times you read the book? Oh, well, I'm, I tell them my list of things to do. is like, dude, you're not going to be successful. You're wasting your money and my time. If you haven't read the book, if you don't have the intent of reading the book, then you're really not serious. You're not serious to the level that you need to be in order to be successful. And I like working with people who want to be successful because that's what it takes, time and repetition. And most people just simply aren't willing to do it. They want the quick fix. He said, we also had a great Skype phone session. He says, since I went on my ultimate first date, I kept dating other girls and it has been really helpful. Multiple dating has helped me to let go quickly when things don't work out well. That's another thing. Rejection breeds obsession. And so when you got one person in your life and you're really hoping that she's going to be in the mother of your children, the next great love of your life or whatever, or the perfect husband if you're a woman, as things go sideways, you become obsessed with that person. It becomes hard to focus on work. 
It becomes hard to be focused on taking care of your body. It just totally screws up every other area of your life. But if you've got an abundance of choices, it's still going to sting when you fuck it up with somebody that you really like. But you usually have three or four other people in your life like this guy does at this point. And I mean it's still hard but it's manageable. You've got plenty of women in your life to help you with your grief therapy. It's a great place to be. He says, the girl I mentioned in the email, the ultimate first date, was a bit cold the weeks after we met. Since the Christmas holidays were in between those weeks, I stayed calm and quiet because he had plenty of other women to occupy his time. He wasn't sitting there thinking, oh, the illusion of action. I got to do something. I don't want her to forget me. I want some other guy to come on and take her away. The best medicine is nothing. Radio fucking silence. Because remember, 97% of the guys out there don't get this and they're constantly throwing their dicks at women. Even when the women say, no, I'm not interested, they're still throwing their dicks at them. They're always going to be wondering, I haven't heard from that guy, Bob. What happened to him? He says, I asked her out only once when the new year started and she replied, hey, I'm quite busy these days. I'll give a shout once I'm free. Now, a guy who's comfortable in his skin, who loves himself and who values himself is going to be like, cool. Of course she likes me. Of course she wants to go out with me. She must really be busy. And you know what? I don't even want to spend time with her when she can really devote herself to being present with me and having a kick-ass time. I don't want her thinking about work or this or that or what she's got to do or be around her if she's all fucking stressed out. I want to have a good time. My time is limited. I don't have a lot of time socially to spend doing leisurely activities because I'm a busy motherfucker. So I want to be hanging out with somebody who's – Ready, willing, and open to hang out fun, hang out, have fun, and hook up. He says, I didn't pursue her and I kept my distance, letting her have space. Only a few months ago, I would have committed the mistake of texting and chasing her. That's exactly what most guys do. He says, Guess what? Yes, you know it already. After three weeks of no contact, she contacted me asking, Hey, how have you been? I'd like to go for a drink next week if you're still up for it. Well, this is like one out of 100 women who actually suggests going out on a date because most women won't do that. When they get back in touch, they'll go, hey, how have you been? I've been thinking about you. That's about as far as it goes. They don't actually ask the guy out. But this woman is very – she's like the exception of the rule. She actually said, I'd like to go for a drink next week if you're still up for it. That's awesome. That makes things pretty fucking easy. And what did he do for three weeks? He's hanging out and having fun and hooking up with other ladies. You know, the bottom line is she wasn't making the effort. He, he called. He tried to ask her out. She's like, oh, I'm really jammed up and busy, but I'll get in touch. Three weeks go by. She reached out. Makes it pretty fucking easy. He says, how did I also manage to stay calm and with no contact for three weeks? He says, easy, dating other girls, exclamation point. I can confirm again that following the fundamentals you teach in your book really works. Read the book 10 to 15 times if you haven't done it already. Go to my website underneath the email sign up box. There's a box that has an image of my book. If you click on that, it will take you to Amazon.com. You can get a paperback version or you can download the Kindle version to any electronic device in under 60 seconds. And There's also a button in that same square on my website where you can click and it will take you – to apple.com and you can get the iBook version of it. So do it now. Understandingrelationships.com. Go there. It's on the back. It's in my background and it's on the bottom of the screen. It's pretty fucking obvious. Get the fucking book. Learn the fundamentals. He says I'm currently enjoying and dating three girls from different nationalities. Oh, you poor baby. Three different nationalities. Oh, that must be so tough. I won't go into detail on all of them. I'm just saying that this applies to all three of them regardless of their ethnic background. I get guys all the time, hey, does your stuff work on Indian women? Does your stuff work on Korean women? Does your stuff work on Chinese women? Does your stuff work on Persian women? It works on women, period. Now, depending on their culture or their religious background or their the rules and laws of their society, there are certain things that they can and can't do depending on the country that they're from. But at the end of the day, what creates attraction is universal for any woman anywhere on the planet. That's just a fact of life. I've read your book eight times so far, so 
in I'm a, in average I'm reading it twice a month since I got it. That's pretty good. That's about right. If you can go through it twice a month, you can get 12 to 15 times in five to six months. That's fucking great. He says, I have no questions for you today, just a thank you message and a testimonial of your great work. Well, you know what, dude? Thanks for being fucking awesome. Thanks for being coachable. I like working with guys like you because you take on board what I teach. You go out and apply it and you go, holy shit, that fucking bald-headed, shaved-ass motherfucker with the freckles on his face, he really knows what the hell he's talking about. I think I'm going to do more of what he suggests because success breeds results results breeds confidence so if you'd like to get my help personally go to my website click the products tab at the top of your screen on any page of my website and just follow the instructions for booking whichever option works best for you and i will talk to you soon